Hey everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on how to make graphs using SPSS and how to avoid some of the common issues or problems that can arise when you're making a graph. So right now we're looking at the announcements area of our particular class. All instructors have an announcement area and those announcement areas are often filled with answers to questions that you might find that you have. All right, now let's go to doc sharing next because that's where all of our data files for SPSS are located. Inside of doc sharing, there are two different areas where you can find data files. First, there's the SPSS discussion data files category where all the different data files are located for the discussion area. Next, there's the instructor graded project assignments category and at the very bottom of that area is stat underscore grades which is the data set that you're going to be using for all four of our class projects. Now I'm going to open that one up just by clicking it. Because I have SPSS installed on my computer, my computer automatically offers me to open it in SPSS which I want to do. You can also download any of these .sav files and then double click them in your computer and they will open in SPSS. So I'll click OK. Once I do that, SPSS is going to open up that data file and it's going to take just a moment to load and it's going to load all of the data and it generally loads it in what's called data view which is here on the bottom left. You can also look at this data in the variable view. So let me click that. The variable view shows us all the different variables in the data, like the ID of the participant, the participant's gender, their ethnicity, the year in school, whether they're in a lower upper division, which section of the course they're in. Stat underscore grades is actually a class filled with statistics students and all of their information, like how they did on the quizzes, how they did on the final exam, what grade they got, and so on. There's three different sections of classes, and if you want to know anything more about any given variable, you come over under Values, and you can click just to the right, and it'll tell you that 1 means Section 1, 2 means Section 2, 3 means Section 3. Same thing with ethnicity. You might want to know the different ethnicities and how they're categorized. In this case, you can see that Category 1 represents American Indian students. Category 2 represents Asian students, and so on. So the variable view is a great place to learn about all the different variables in the data set what they mean, how they're represented, and even whether they're nominal, ordinal, or just continuous numerical values. Now let's go back to the data view and make some graphs. To make a graph, we want to click on the graphs option up above and choose chart builder. This is going to open up a quick window that gives us some information that we don't have to worry about, so we're going to click OK. And then this brings us to our chart builder wizard. If there's ever junk in here, or if you've already made some graphs, it'll often show you the very last graph that you made. You only need to come down to the bottom and click Reset. Reset clears this area and starts you all over again. The next important step in making graphs is to first think to yourself, what variable or variables are you trying to graph? What information are you trying to share with the viewer? And what is the most appropriate graph for the variable that you want to image or show? Let's say I want to look at the variable gender. Gender is a categorical variable. It's called nominal. It's made up of two categories, males and females. And the categories are shown down here at the bottom, which is really nice and convenient. It's nominal because it's not numeric in any way and it doesn't have any kind of order to it. It's just filled with male and female information. Well, with this type of discrete variable, I can choose if I want a pie graph. That's often a very excellent graph when you have a discrete variable with very few categories. So if I choose a pie graph down here under my gallery, I can take this pie graph, I can press my left mouse button down and hold it, and then drag the pie graph over to this area. This is a drag and drop application. Then I'll release my mouse. So now SPSS knows that I want to make a pie chart. 
Next, I want my slices to show the different genders. So I'm going to click on gender and I'm going to drag it over to this slice by area. And it says, okay, great. Now here on this side, on, on the left, I can leave it as count, which is the exact number of males and females, or I can come over here and change count to things like percentage, or the exact value, or things like this. And if you use percentage, you can even set different parameters, like do you want the grand total, or so on. And that's really up to you. And when I make a change here, I want to apply that change. The other thing I can do is I can add titles and footnotes. So I'll click on that tab. I think I want to add a main title and I think I want a second title. And I don't really feel that I need any footnotes here, but that's really up to you when you make your graph. Over to the right it says, okay, what do you want to put in your titles? Well, I want my main title to say the gender of students in our statistics class. I want that to be my title. So I'll apply that. Now my title too, I actually want my name in there. So this graph is made by Amy Gates. And I'll apply that as well. And so I've got my titles in and now I can click OK. Notice that because I did everything correctly, SPSS is letting me click OK. So when I click that, it's going to build my pie chart for me. And let me go ahead and scroll down so we can see it. Here's my title and my name. I've got my little grid here showing female and male. And I can see, wow, I've got more female students than male students here. I can even do more. I can double click this to activate it. Let me do that now. And when I double click it, it brings it up in a new window where I can edit and do even more. I can look at different properties. I can copy this chart. I can view different options. I can change the title if I want to. And I can even affect elements like the data labels. If I want, I can show the data labels. I'm going to click that because I kind of like that idea. 60.95% female, 39.05% male. Okay, I'm happy with that. And if I want to, I can save this template or I can just copy this chart and put it into a Word document. Or I can just close this out and the changes that I've made will reappear right here in SPSS. In this area I can also right click. I can right click my mouse and I can choose copy special. I want to copy this as an image. Make sure none of the other boxes are checked, just image. Click OK. And now I can actually open up a Word document if I want to. And inside that new Word document, I can place, by right-clicking, this particular graph that I just made. So lots of different ways to edit or paste graphs into Word documents. Now that's an example when everything goes smoothly and I'm making a graph for only one variable, that's gender, and I'm making the correct graph or an appropriate graph, which is a pie chart. What if I go into graphs again and I try to make a graph and I'm going to reset. Reset clears everything. I'm going to go back to gallery. And let's say I want to make a graph of something like GPA, which is a continuous variable that's numerical. And let's try, let's say I try to make a pie chart again. So I drag my pie chart over and I say, okay, I want to put GPA into here. Now I know that that's not an appropriate graph for GPA. I can't use a pie chart to graph GPA because there's continuous data and if anything it'll be a big mess. Well SPSS knows this. It says no categories here. This is a scale variable. You don't want to use a pie chart for this. So when I try to put GPA over here, it doesn't let me. The OK button doesn't light up, it doesn't let me do it because it knows that this is not an appropriate graph. Let's try to make a histogram instead. Let me reset this again. Click on histogram, drag the histogram option over, and now I want to go back and try to graph my previous GPA this way. I'll drag that over and SPSS says sure thing. Because previous GPA is continuous, a histogram is great for that. And again, I can come over and I can make updates. I can change the name of my x-axis. I can change the name of my y-axis. Or I can just close this down. 
I can add footnotes and titles here if I want to, and I can just click OK, and I can let SPSS create a histogram for me that describes student GPAs. All right, let's take one more example. Notice that in both of these cases, I only graphed one variable. One of the most common errors that students can make is when they go in to create their graph, they try to create a graph, let me reset, using more than one variable, but that doesn't make any sense. Let's say, for example, that you're trying to graph ethnicity but you're also wondering about year in school. Well, you want to be careful what kind of graph you choose for that. If you choose a pie graph again, for example, that'll definitely work for ethnicity because that's a discrete variable. But when you try to pull gender over to this area, no, 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 it doesn't like that. It says that's not going to make any sense. I can't create a pie chart that describes ethnicity and gender simultaneously because pie charts don't work that way. So anytime you try to do something in here and it doesn't let you, it's because it knows that what you're trying to do isn't really appropriate for the type of graph you're, you're wanting to make. If I want to look at two different variables simultaneously, and let me click Reset, I might want to try something more like a scatter plot. Let me drag a scatter plot over, and we're going to talk more about scatter plots in Unit 3. But I can actually look at the correlation, if I want to, between, say, GPA and, let's say, year in school. It's going to let me do that. It may not be very attractive, but it says, okay, we can definitely look at the correlation between GPA and year in school. And so it's going to let me click OK here, and it's going to let me do that. So when I click OK, it creates another correlation graph. This is a terrible correlation graph. Uh, because this is a discrete variable. And we'll talk more about scatter plots and correlation in Unit 3. But the key to this particular video is to show you how to make graphs, making sure that you're just graphing the single variable that you're trying to graph, and making sure that you're choosing the appropriate graph for the variable. If it's a discrete variable, you want to use maybe something like a pie chart or a bar graph. If it's a continuous variable, maybe something like a histogram. I hope this helped, and I will see you in class.